Cane toads are one of the worst invasive species in the world and are such a problem they are listed as a key threatening process under federal legislation in Australia. This is because their toxins kill native predators that try to eat them and they also eat native species and compete with native animals for food, shelter and breeding resources. Since their introduction in 1935 to Queensland, cane toads have spread across northern Australia and now cover one third of the continent. In 2009 they reached the Kimberley and have the potential to damage the biodiversity of this unique region in the immediate future. We must prevent this. Unless areas are protected from the toads, they will have a significant impact on a range of species including predators such as goannas and quolls and populations of many species with whom they compete for food such as native frogs. This has already occurred in the Northern Territory. Research results reveal that the impact of cane toads on native species is more severe in areas with a more arid climate and longer, harsher dry seasons. For example, freshwater crocodiles in the NT, researched by Dr Sean Doody, were not as severely impacted as the same species in the Victoria River, located further south in an area with a more arid climate, where Dr Mike Lechnick did his research. This will mean bad news for the Kimberley, an area that has a harsher, and drier season than the NT. The good news is that we can do something about the impact of toads. This DVD will show you that it is possible to protect specific areas from the impact of cane toads. It is possible to protect some of our most significant biodiversity hotspots. Your support can help us make it happen. Over the past four years, our two community groups, the Stop the Toad Foundation and Frogwatch, have been researching and trialling the most effective manual control techniques. Both groups have used fences to keep cane toads out of an area, but allow native animals to pass through. We have trialled two different fencing designs, exclusion fences that stop toads getting to water, and barrier fences that are designed to block their movement into an area and direct them towards other control measures such as traps. The exclusion fencing strategy was developed by examining the cane toads' major weakness, their poor water retaining ability. Research by Dr Ross Alford has shown cane toads lose water at the same rate as a wet cloth. This is a biological weakness that makes them vulnerable to dehydration in dry areas such as the Kimberley. In the wet season, when water covers the landscape, they can move wherever they choose. But in the dry season, their only real option is to remain near a water body. This gives us an ideal time and opportunity to effectively remove them using a fence. When cane toads come out of their refuge places to rehydrate in the evenings, they are blocked from water by the fence and will stay along the fence trying to gain access to water. This allows people to collect them easily by simply walking the fence lines each night and picking them up instead of randomly searching through the bush and possibly missing a few. Exclusion fencing is easy to erect and can be used in most locations. Even natural systems can be fenced using this technique. Stop the Toad has used the exclusion fence model to remove large numbers of toads during their annual Great Toad Muster a volunteer based event which is timed to happen at the end of the dry season when toads are congregated around waterholes and are most vulnerable to these control techniques. In the four years STTF have run the muster we have removed 175,000 cane toads and thousands of metamorphs and tadpoles with the help of over 340 volunteers. Using the exclusion fence design Stop the Toad has the only documented case of complete eradication of local toad populations at a number of sites during the muster. The impact of these fences has been verified by external agencies such as the Department of Environment of Conservation. DEC's cane toad sniffer dog found 0, 1, 2 and 3 at different sites two weeks after the muster. Dr Mike Lechnick has also verified this technique with his research at Camfield Station. The second type of fencing design Barrier fences are segments of fencing with open ends that are used to shut off corridors that cane toads move through. They enable us to restrict the movement of cane toads into an area, improve the efficiency of toad busing in an area and significantly increase the effectiveness of cane toad traps placed along the fence. Because the cane toads cannot pass through the fence, they move along it and become exposed to the effective reach of the cane toad traps and get caught. Frogwatch has used the barrier fence to greatly reduce the movement of toads into areas of Darwin. Stop the Toad and Frogwatch 
have the experience and evidence in the field that it is possible to control toads using fences. The fencing model has also been scientifically validated by a third party. In 2009, Dr Mike Lechnick also used exclusion fencing to locally eradicate a cane toad population in the Victoria River District. We may not be able to stop toads from moving further west into WA, but we can keep them out of specific areas using the fencing technique. We are confident that we can eradicate toad populations that threaten vulnerable areas such as smaller billabongs and wetlands and stop cane toads from impacting on the Kimberley's unique wildlife in these areas. With your support we can get started in developing large scale plans to prevent the toads from damaging key biodiversity places and continue removing them from current locations. Our vision is to select high biodiversity sites in national parks, world heritage areas or on private land where the key elements of the fencing strategy can be applied. These areas will become toad free zones or sanctuaries and the existing biodiversity will be protected. We have the capability to spread the fencing strategy to many other organisations such as Indigenous Ranger programs and tourism operators. We have the management tools, the partnerships are in place and Indigenous groups are keen to expand their involvement. All that's missing is the funding to help make it happen on a larger scale. Our response to the toad threat is a practical one, one that can unite and educate people and would be an environmental project that you and your company can be proud to be associated with. Our hope is that you will see merit in the idea and support it. A biological or genetic solution to cane toads may still be 10 to 20 years away. We don't have that time and we can't afford to sit around and wait. Be proactive and help us keep unique wildlife areas cane toad free. This message was brought to you by two groups involved in the cane toad control effort. The Stop the Toad Foundation STTF is a non-government, not-for-profit organisation dedicated to controlling cane toads in Western Australia. The patron of the foundation is Tim Winton. Frogwatch is a not-for-profit organisation focused on raising environmental awareness, especially about issues relating to frogs. Both organisations have paid staff to manage daily operations and finances, but rely heavily on volunteers to deliver on-ground results. Frogwatch has been active in the Northern Territory since 1991, and whilst their primary focus is on native frogs, they have played a very significant role in raising community awareness about cane toads and their impact on native ecosystems. Stop the Toad was incorporated in 2005 when widespread community concerns about the toads reaching WA were raised. Since then they have collaborated with Frogwatch on solving the toad problem. Our joint research effort, based on an adaptive management model, involves scientific partners, environmental groups, indigenous groups, local community groups, local businesses, corporate sponsors and government groups and has led to significant advances in management techniques. For more information go to our websites. Go to www.stopthetoad.org.au or www.frogwatch.org.au